goalkeeper Jim McDonough. Even so, the demotion of manager Brian Miller, revealed on Wednesday morning, shocked the football world. Miller had taken Burnley to the third division championship only eight months earlier. And it was, after all, the morning of the club's fifth round milk cup tie, difficult enough away at Spurs. But the headlines the next day were of a vastly different nature. Burnley producing a milk cup sensation, not just beating Spurs, but trouncing them 4-1. White Hart Lane, 45 seconds into the second half, Spurs young striker Terry Gibson with a simple chance from close range. It was a soft goal from Burnley's point of view. Mickey Phelan here missed timing a header. And then Willie Donachie missing his kick, Gibson right on the spot. It was a stage then, it seemed, for Osvaldo Ardiles to turn on the style in his first home game back with Spurs. Ardiles the number seven here, but Alan Stevenson responding well in the Burnley goal. But a stroke of good fortune then turned the match upside down. The Tottenham defender Graham Roberts heading into his own goal. And Burnley a level after 70 minutes. It was a real miscalculation by Roberts. But it's 1-1 and Burnley quickly put their luck to good use. And one of the Spurs players to wilt under the pressure was surprisingly Ray Clements. An error of judgment here Clements out of his area, giving the ball away, and then finding that to retrieve the situation, he has to handle. And Ray Clements lucky there not to be sent off, though he was booked. But for all their protests, Burnley did score from the free kick. Taken by Kevin Young, Steve Taylor in at the near post, and Hamilton making no mistake. Utter chaos there in Tottenham's defence as Taylor has a swing here, and Billy Hamilton was able to seize on the confusion. The unreal nature of the night was perfectly illustrated by Burnley's third goal. Taylor in the clear, and his cross deflecting off the hapless Roberts. 3-1 to Burnley, with three minutes left. Definitely, it was an attempted cross by Taylor, but Clements deceived and unable to keep the ball out. Well, Burnley and the acting manager, Frank Casper, would surely have settled for that. But in the last seconds, Hamilton here races past Roberts and blasts in his second goal. A splendid finale on an unforgettable night for Burnley. Two goals for the Northern Ireland International. 4-1, the margin of victory. But this morning at Turf Moor, the excitement of a Milk Cup semi-final with Liverpool was still mixed with surprise at the timing of the decision to demote Brian Miller. If you'll go back to last Monday, we were nine points adrift in the relegation battle. We have lost more league games than any one of the other 92 clubs. We have, in our last 11 away games, drawn one and lost 10. That's an appalling situation something had to be done a decision was made to change the team manager the next question the last question was the timing of the announcement bearing all things in mind it was thought that nothing could happen at Tottenham which would make an appointment after the game more sensible did the players in any way feel that they were going out perhaps to play for Brian on Wednesday night well uh, personally I'm very sad to see Brian being relieved of the duties but uh, that's bad and bad, I can't do anything about it and uh, you know all the players, we knew it was a tough match, we just went out and we fought and battled and you know, just give 100% as usual. And... Obviously we were shocked because uh, whenever a manager loses his job, uh, the players to a certain extent got to face the blame. Uh, but uh, we just, we went down there, Frank told us on the Tuesday night and like, you said, like I said we were a bit shocked but we had a job to do and you know fortunately for us we, did, we went and won there. Well, today, Frank Casper was confirmed as Burnley's acting manager. 38-year-old Casper first joined the club as a striker back in 1967. And until his playing career was finished by injury, Frank Casper was a prolific goal scorer. And here's Casper to chase this one. It's a good shot. Oh, a brilliant goal! Uh, I'm pleased I, I, I've been put in charge. Uh, I am ambitious I, I, and I want to do well. And I want to do well, well for Burnley Football Club uh, till the end of the season with the results. Do you see it as a trial period to getting the job on a permanent basis? 
Uh, well, it, it's difficult to say, really. You know, I've, I haven't spoken to the chairman as such at length. Uh, I've been told I've been put in charge of the team, and that's as far as I know at the present time. I've been busy with team selection and teamwork and lots of other things that I haven't had time really to sort things out. And so I said, my main concern really is, is getting the, the team together for Saturday against Barnsley. So while Brian Miller still ponders on an offer to stay with Burnley in another capacity, Barnsley-born Frank Casper now plots Burnley's efforts to gain revenge for a 3-0 defeat at Barnsley back in September. Chambers, plenty of men up in the box. Glavin is one of them. Might come down to Ian, Bar Ian Banks. He couldn't control it. But Ronson has got Glavin through in a good position. A good cross, a chance for Ian Banks off the other side of the bar. Ian Banks might well hold his head. He should perhaps have scored really there. And now a chance for Glavin, who has done. And that's intelligent play by Ronnie Glavin. Having created one opening, he stayed up and made it count when the ball came back. Again, it's Birch's corner, the punch from Stevenson. Ronson's in the penalty area and does sufficiently well to get it over for Birch again. Number two from Parker. Now a real chance on here. Glavin streaking down if the ball's played to him now. The 